Hello audio fans, this is Audio Bird, and this video is going to show you how you can build yourself a pair of these omnidirectional speakers. This is called the OmniHex 6. It's a six-sided uh, hex-shaped uh, enclosure with using a coaxial speaker uh, mounted in the top uh, with a reflecting uh, panel that uh, spreads the sound out through the room. If you look down here at the bottom you'll see where the ports are located that load the speaker uh, in the bottom of the system. So, uh, sit down, uh, grab your notebooks, get ready to take some information down, and let's build a pair of these OmniHex omnidirectional speakers you can use with just about any type of audio system. Here are the parts that are going to be used to build our OmniHex enclosure. Here we have six pieces of 1x6 pine lumber now you can use hardwood if you'd like or any other material, three quarter inch thick. Uh, the one on the very extreme left here has a hole cut in the bottom of it for our speaker terminal cup. And the one the uh, fourth over here has a notch in the bottom of it, two by three inches, which is our port. If we look down at the other parts we have, we've got a little baffle plate that goes inside the bottom of the enclosure just above the port here to form our, our port tunnel. And we have a 12 and a half inch piece of 3 quarter inch plywood here on the left. This is our base uh, that will, uh, the enclosure will sit on. Here we have our baffle plate that goes in the top of the enclosure and our speaker will mount within it. Now this, this is cut out at 7 and a quarter inches and I've made a little indentation in it also with the router so that uh, the speaker will set a little lower in the baffle. We have three holes in it, 120 degrees apart and these are where the uh, baffle uh, supports for the top will be placed. Now here we have our top which again is ten and a half inches in diameter and it has uh, three half inch, uh, four and a half inch uh, by half inch uh, dowel rods that will fit into these half inch holes. Now I've run my router around the edges of both the base and the top to give it a little bit of uh, detail. This is our basic parts and I will show you how they all go together. Now, what speakers are we going to use in our OmniHex omnidirectional enclosure? Let me show you the first one that I've got here for you. This is a Goldwood 8004, uh, available from PartsExpress.com. It has a built-in neodymium tweeter in the center here and, and a uh, high-pass network, uh, basically your crossover network for your higher frequencies. It has an excellent mid-range response and pretty good bass response. It has a curvilinear polycone. Uh, it has a nice rubber surround, uh, it has a magnet that can handle uh, up to uh, 50 watts peak, and it has a response of approximately 35 to 20,000 hertz. I measured the resonant frequency of this at about uh, 50 hertz, which is fine for the way uh, we've designed our enclosure. Now there's another speaker that you can use. This is the GRS-8FR8. Now this speaker Instead of having an electric tweeter, it has a mechanical tweeter, what we call a whizzer cone, mounted at the apex of the voice coil. It has a little dome in the center of it here. Uh, this speaker will also work well in the system. It has good bass response. It has a little bit better power handling capability because it has a little bit larger magnet on the back of it. And its sensitivity is pretty good. It will work well. Uh, the only thing is it doesn't have quite the brilliance in the higher ranges uh, that I like to have for symphonic music, but it's perfect probably for, for most of the music, uh, rock music and country music and uh, vocals and so forth, and it's a rather inexpensive compared with the, uh, the Goldwood. Now there's another alternative that you can do, and this is what I've done. Here we have a coaxial speaker that I made. I took a Goldwood tweeter, uh, and I mounted it on some aluminum uh, brackets that I farmed uh, so it would clear the uh, surround here. And I installed a, a little high-pass network on the back of the speaker. Uh, this particular woofer, I had two of these in stock for a number of years made by Audio Concepts. Again, it has a pretty good sized magnet on the back of it. It has a lot of sensitivity. This speaker can actually handle over 100 watts, which is kind of overkill for our project. But uh, I, I like the sound of this particular uh, speaker and, and may or may not elect to use it as the final product in my, my version of the OmniHex. But it shows you that you have a lot of flexibility in, in choosing a, an 8-inch speaker for the system. So uh, we'll go on and show you later on how this mounts in the uh, upper part of the uh, OmniHex enclosure. 
Now you've seen the uh, parts to the omnihex enclosure. Now we'll show you how the top part is assembled. This is the baffle area, the baffle plate, and the top of the omnihex enclosure. What I have here is a piece of three quarter inch plywood, ten and one half inches in diameter, with a seven and one quarter inch hole cut to the center. There are three half inch holes spaced 120 degrees uh, around the circle, and these holes will match up with the three uh, doll rods you see here, which are uh, four and a half inches long, and they're glued into the top, again with holes spaced 120 degrees, half inch holes, about three eighths of an inch deep on these holes, by the way. Now how I got these to match up, I, I, t I actually clamped the top to the base, drilled a one eighth inch hole up through the base, three eighths of an inch into the top, and that gave me my guide holes for my half inch uh, drill. And I did this in a drill press in order to ha get extreme accuracy so it fits together. Now how this goes together is very simple like this. Now I, I found this little filly top here uh, at my local craft store, but you can, you can either leave it off or you can find something else to stick on there if you want. Uh, here's how it fits basically into the uh, baffle plate like this and you don't uh, glue uh, the dowel rods into the base. You do them in the top, but you don't in the base. And this way you can get the top off rather easily to, in order to fix the uh, speaker or change the speaker. And here's how the speaker will go in, just like this. Be mounted in there just like this. But there's another part we have to have to our assembly. In order to get the sound reflected out into the room from this top, up from the speaker, we have to have a reflector. And this is our reflector right here. This reflector is made out of a piece of, uh, of a ball, an eight inch ball that I bought at the local craft store and I had to cut two and a half inches of it off the bottom here in order to get it exactly the shallow depth that I wanted. Now I did actual testing with this using a, uh, an audio oscillator and a field st and a uh, audio uh, meter to see just which frequencies were being reflected where and uh, uh, I, I kept shaving this thing down until I got it exactly what I think is the right way uh, for, for the basic speakers that I showed you. Now this will actually fasten to the inside of the top like this, centered directly over the speaker, and we'll get good reflection of our sound in an omnidirectional pattern out through the room. Now you've seen how the top assembly goes together. Here's the base that we're going to be using for the omnihex. The enclosure tube, the hex tube, will fit right on the top here of this 12 and a half inch piece of three quarter inch plywood. I've run an OG bit around the edges of it just like I did on the top in order to make it, uh, give it a little bit of detail, make it look a little more interesting. Now this again will be glued and with, with liquid nails and screws up through the bottom and that's how our, uh, our enclosure will be supported. The sides of our omnihex enclosure are made up of six each, one by six boards, 40 inches long per enclosure. Uh, in order to get the uh, 30 degree bevel on the edges that we're going to glue together and make our hex shape, we're using a router with a 30 degree bit. And whatever you use a router, make sure that you have eye protection as well as ear protection. And I'm doing mine outdoors today. I've got a pretty good wind blowing and most of my sawdust will blow away from me. You can see the 30 degree bit on the end of the router here. There we have our bevel edge on the on the boards. Now we're going to show you how you assemble your omnihex enclosure using this special jig that I built. Uh, these are cut exactly at the 30 degree angle that we need and I've spaced these so that they're the same width on the top here as the inside of the boards. And you can see how this is going to work. If I take one of these uh, side panels with our 30 degree bevel on it here and we put it down inside of our jig like this. Fits snugly. I've got some little uh, popsicle sticks actually holding it in place here as, as I adjusted it. Now you want to be careful when you're assembling the unit. You want to make sure that you get the port and the speaker cup holes uh, panels exactly opposite each other. So when you build this, you're going to build this assembly first like this. Make sure that the, the uh, port is on the top 
and that this, when you do the speaker hole side, that the speaker hole side is also uh, on the top. This is how the other side will go on, just like this. You'll even them up, and then we'll take our nail gun, we'll glue here for it, we'll glue them together first, and then we'll take our nail gun and uh, assemble them together. Okay, well, I've applied glue to the edges of our first board we're going to nail on, and I'm using our air gun, our nail gun, with one inch nails. Now when you do this, you're going to have to aim these a little differently than what you normally would do. Normally you would hit the surface like this square, but we're going to have to do these at a little bit of an angle this way. We might have a head sticking up when we do that, but we'll use a, uh, a nail set to put it in tighter when we're done. So we're going to start off here on this end. I've got both ends lined up properly, and we're going to put our first nail in. And we'll just continue on down. Till we get our complete side in. Now what we'll do is, when this is assembled, we'll place it on top of the other one we've assembled and, and put them both together and we'll have, a, have our barrel shape. All right, this is our side, the first side we have assembled. Next step is we're going to take our caulking gun. We're going to run a bead of caulk all the way down. You can see my mic cable here stringing out. But we're going to run this all the way down along the edge, inside edge here to make sure we got a good seal. And we'll do this on all of the uh, seals, all the edges. Uh, when we get the other ones placed on top of the other one, you'll be able to run your caulking gun down part of the way, and the rest of the way you might have to do by hand, but you will get it, uh, you will get it caulked nonetheless. That's how we do. Now our next step after we got it caulked, we're going to put our, our indoor-outdoor carpet on the inside. Now after we've caulked the inside of our assembled panels, we're going to line each one with this uh, indoor-outdoor carpeting that you can get at your home store. Uh, I think I got a 9 by 12 piece for about uh, 10 bucks. And uh, use your staple gun to put it on the sides. Now I've already got one piece in here, and it's very simple to do. Lay it in. Make sure it's been cut off less than the 40 inches internally. I cut these off at about 39 inches. And just take your staple gun and run down the inside of it like this. Now if you want to glue it in, you can, but we, I have found that the staples work just as well. They're quicker to do, less messy, and it makes for a neat installation. Now we'll go ahead and finish this up and we'll finish up the other side and we'll show you how they go together. Now we've got our two sides assembled here and, st and nailed together. The last thing we have to do is put our port piece in inside the enclosure. This is the actual uh, piece of wood that forms our port. You can see I've got it cut at the right angles here to fit in. This is exactly five and a half inches wide. It's actually a piece of uh, one by six lumber. It works out very nicely to give us the exact length that we want on the port. And what you'll do is you'll insert this in the enclosure like this, even with the top of the port here, and then we'll nail it in on the sides and caulk it up. And that completes our uh, basic enclosure. Uh, we'll go on later on and show you how uh, the rest of it assembles. Now here's what it looks like when it's assembled. You see our top uh, baffle area with the speaker mounted inside. And if we pan down here to the bottom of our Omni Hex, you'll see the uh, base and our porthole, uh, which is uh, used, uh, of course, to uh, load the speaker enclosure. The porthole is two by three inches. Well, the Omnihex has been painted and assembled and ready to go here. But before we install the speaker, we have to put our stuffing down into the uh, uh, enclosure. And what we're going to be using is this uh, polyfill material. We're going to use about six ounces of this uh, from a 16 ounce bag. And you can kind of estimate that, divide it up. And, in thirds and you tease it out as you do this just like this and then put it back in put it into the enclosure what you're going to want to do is get it down to that barrier that we installed in there to keep it from falling through now you don't want to push it down real hard uh, you want to just kind of let it uh, let it settle on its own if you can and uh, it'll work out a lot better for you you want to bring it all the way up to the very top
and then we'll uh, install the speaker. All right, we're now going to solder in our speaker. I've got one lead attached. We're going to attach the other one here real quick. And we'll be ready to mount our speaker and do our first test with it. That's really all there is to it. So simple, no crossover network needed. It's built in, and uh, now it's ready to go. All right, here's one of the systems that uh, has been completed. You'll notice that the reflector is somewhat different than the styrofoam dome that we used in the originals. I happened to find this in an old junked Magnavox stereo from the 1960s. That reflector was used uh, for the woofer, not for the tweeter. But uh, I mounted it in the top and it works pretty good, uh, but it works just as well with, with the styrofoam dome. I can't say any difference in sound quality. So you can experiment around with different reflectors if you'd like, but uh, the, the styrofoam dome will work fine for you. Let's take a look at our sealed, our finished system here. You can see the port at the bottom and the base. It gets you an idea of what it's going to look like in your music room. But I've got one more system I want to show you that you might find interesting. We'll, we'll look at that just right now. Now, if you look at the system sitting next to the OmniHex, this is its little cousin, the OmniHex 5. The difference is, it, this is, uses a, a 5 and 1 quarter inch coaxial speaker. The dome reflector is, has not been cut uh, down. It's actually the ball completely cut in half of a 5 inch styrofoam ball using the same techniques we used in the, uh, the original to, uh, to make it harder. Uh, it's got the same construction uh, as the other one. The only difference is it uses 1 by 4 lumber for the hex sides instead of 1 by 6 lumber. But you can use the same techniques to assemble one like this as you can uh, making the Big Brother. The port in this one is only 1 by 3 inches. The base is 11 inches in diameter. And the top baffle is uh, 8 inches as well as the top of the baffle is 8 inches. The uh, supports are the same half inch dowel rods that were used in, are used in the Big Brother here. Uh, the sound quality of this one is just as good as the big one. The bass is tight. It's not as voluminous in bass, obviously, as you would have with a larger speaker. But it works very nicely, so if you don't have room for the big one, you can certainly build yourself one of these smaller ones using the same techniques that we showed you in the video. Well, we want to thank you for watching. We hope that you'll keep watching our channel. Every now and then we're going to pop in with something of interest for you, I'm sure. So, this is Audio Bird saying goodbye and good listening.